This episode of Motoring Box is proudly supported by Century Batteries. Welcome back to Motoring Box. I'm Sean McKellar. And this is my 2002 Mitsubishi Magna Rally Art. So if you've been following on with the journey, we are going for a roadworthy certificate and we are getting very close to actually attempting to go for one, in my opinion. So we've gone through the interior, got the heater working, we've gone through and cleaned everything out, we've refinished the dash, it's looking absolutely fantastic in there. So this week I'm actually going to turn my attention to the exterior. So I've never had the wheels off this car, so it'll be interesting to pull them off, have a look at the brakes. And what we're going to be doing at the same time is getting rid of these speedy carbine wheels. So I've actually grown to like these and they actually clean up pretty good, which I'll show you in a minute. But these things actually are down past the wear bars on the tires, so at a minimum they needed new tires, but I thought why don't we put on the stock standard Magna Rally Art wheels, which are actually included with this car. I actually have a full set of five, so I found one that had the best tread on it, put it in the back as a spare, and then I got brand new tires on the other four. So as with my BA Falcon XR6 Turbo, I've gone for a set of Bridgestone Pretenzas RE003, and I think they're just an amazing street tire. They're pretty cheap. Usually you can get them on a four for three deal. So the thing about this little restoration we're doing on this car is I'm judging what condition we need to be getting this car back up to. Obviously it needs a respray because the paint is cooked. But I sort of looked at these wheels and I thought, yeah, some of them have a little bit of rash, but overall they look great. And I think for a 20 plus year old car, they're gonna do the job. So these have not been refinished. I've just cleaned them up. We'll give them an additional clean today just to finish them off. I've redone the center cap, so we'll pop them in too. So we better get this car up in the air and see what's going on. So I'm not planning to get under the car today, so I'm not gonna put any jack stands in. We'll, uh, we'll play it safe. don't have much of a lip, so they're probably not as old as you would think, or they've been skimmed at some point. I will check the measurements, just to see how it stacks up. So from what I can see, the pads have actually got a bit of meat, but I might uh, swivel the, the caliper out and just check that. Um, I can see that this little boot here is sort of twisted around, so I'll see if I can uh, get rid of the zip tie off that and see if I can twist it back and replace it. Uh, but otherwise, nothing too scary looking under here. Just a little bit of surface rust. There's our Coney shocks. Now there is a tiniest lip on here. It looks like it's about half a mil and it's measuring at 24.0. So it's probably about 23.5 in reality. So these pads have 7.5 mil of uh, meat on them. So that is actually quite nice. Fairly new, I would suggest. So that is fantastic, no need for pads on the front. Hopefully uh, the other side will be the same. All right, I'm pretty happy with this, so let's get the arm back on. Now before I throw this beautiful wheel on, I wanna show you something if you're on a budget. So have a look at these speedy wheels. They look really sort of worn out. They're very faded looking. If you're on a budget and say, you just need a set of cheap tires and you want to keep running the wheels you got. Here's a tip, Armour Tire Foam. Now, you'd think this stuff would just be for the tires, judging by the name, but if you use some of this, this one is running out a little bit, but let's see if we can uh, get enough out of here to clean the wheel. Spray every single surface, and you can literally walk away. <laughs> if you don't want to do any, any more, minimum effort, do the tire as well while you're here. So spray every single surface, get around all the corners of the spokes. As you would have seen, I did a video filming how to clean an engine bay with this stuff and you get phenomenal results. All right, this is exciting. Oh, you know what I've just realized? I need to put that center cap on. Ah, oh, idiot. 
So this is gonna be great. I can't wait to get these on because it's just putting the car back to how it should have been. So I have a brand new set of Tough Nuts from Super Cheap. I bought these retail because I buy pretty much everything retail. And you can't actually buy these things in a set of five. So I bought a set of four and then I also bought a set of four lock nuts. Because if you've got a set of wheels which are rare or valuable, I think it makes sense to have them. Just gotta keep the key <laughs> somewhere where you can find it. So let's buzz these up really lightly. So don't worry about uh, that thing sort of cracking because they are nowhere near torque to spec. So this lock nut key needs a 19 mil socket to go on the end. And then you just need to spin it around until it engages. So I'll tighten these up as far as we can whilst they're on the car. Can't feel any movement. So I think that one is good to go. <laughs> Looks great. So apparently these wheels need 80 foot-pounds of torque for the nuts and to newton meters that's about 110. So I want to do the lock nut last so we'll trace our way back and we'll start with this one. Looks pretty smart. I'm very happy with how that has turned out. Oh. Goodbye. I'm not going to pop the caliper this time just because I can actually see these pads really well and they are about the same. Rotors as well don't really have much of a lip on them. I reckon they're fairly new, but this car's spent about the last five, six years off the road. So that's why they are so, got so much surface rust on them. Maybe this car wasn't such a bad buy after all. Uh, I'm not gonna go too crazy with the cleaning this time. So that is enough for me. Looks fairly flat. See how those conies perform as well. And you know how the other week, how I thought there was a can of some sort on the exhaust? I can confirm there is a can of mother, which is structurally integral to my exhaust. I do wonder how strict they are when it comes to roadworthies, whether a can as part of the exhaust actually matters. Do they just care if it seals? Or do they actually care about what it's made out of? <coughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you've ever had any experience with that. As I mentioned in that previous video, I do not have a welder, so sort of repairing that exhaust is kind of beyond me a little bit. So if it won't pass a, a safety certificate or a roadworthy, I would potentially have to be getting a day permit and, and running it down to an exhaust shop or something, which isn't ideal. So check it out guys, we are done. And this car bit by bit is getting back to where I want it to be. So have a look at these wheels. I think they look pretty good even though they haven't been restored. A little bit of rash, etc. Still need to give them a final clean, but with the new wheel nuts, they look really good. So these four here are the standard nuts and that's the lock nut. But unless you look closely, now that I pointed out, you can see the difference, but from a meter or so back, no difference at all. So yeah, bit by bit, we're winning guys, slowly. I only have limited time per weekend, about three hours every weekend to work on this, so 
That's why things do take a little bit longer. But yeah, look at that. While we're here, I'm just gonna finish off this door trim as well. So we need to clean it and also need to put on the little surround here for the handle. So you might recall when I picked these surrounds up, they were actually gray and now they're black. So it's gonna look fantastic. How did I actually do it though? Well, I have a product here I've been using for a couple of years called T-Cut Bumper Dressing. So this is really like a black dye and I simply applied that to the plastic. You, it's got like a foam sort of a spongy applicator on the top. I've had this bottle for years, so it's looking a bit worse for wear. But you simply dab it on and you can use a cloth if you want to to try and sort of even it out. It's pretty much permanent because like I said, it is like a black dye. Uh, this stuff is really hard to get, but Bowden's do one which is called Mr. Black, which I believe does exactly the same thing. So let's feed this one on. These things break all the time apparently because either people forget to undo the screw when they're taking off the door trim or perhaps they talk the screw up too much. I don't really know. But uh, that looks fantastic. That is bizarre. Perhaps the door handle position needs to be adjusted. We'll come back to it. We'll go for our Bowden's Orange Agent. Because this car is filthy. There's especially a lot of grime, like human slime buildup. I'm just going to spray some of this on directly because it needs a lot of it. Yeah, see that? <laughs> it doesn't look bad, but it is terrible. I imagine this will be the worst part because so many arms have been resting on this over the years. Looking pretty good. So as I mentioned in the video introducing these products from Bowden's, this is Vinyl Care, it'll do vinyl, it'll do plastics, it's interior trim protectants. It is doing a bit of cleaning effort as well, but for the most part I believe it's a uh, interior protectant, so it's kind of the final step. Now apparently you're not meant to let this dry, you're meant to put it on and then sort of buff it off with the clean side of the cloth. So I'll try and follow their instructions with that. But yeah, already that part there looks pretty damn good. Okay, that one's done. Oh, and if you're interested to find out how that wheel turned out after we sprayed that tire foam on it, have a look at it. It is still needing some additional drying time, but it will dry to a sort of a satin finish. It won't be glossy and oily, which is kind of how it looks at the moment. So you can speed the process up by hosing them off if you want to, to sort of get rid of the, the residue or the whatever is left there. But I have found with time, it'll sort of take care of itself, which is kind of, how this wheel looks. This one is obviously dirty again because it's been sitting for a while, but this is kind of how it turned out, which is a lot better than how they were originally, which was like that. So if you can't afford a new set of wheels, that is a really good way to restore the ones you have. Right guys, so I'm gonna leave it there for today. I'm really happy with how this car looks. And I know I say that after everything I do on this car, I always say, I'm really happy with how this looks because I am. I think everything we're doing to this car and everything we've done so far is just making it look so much better. I mean, have a look at these things. These wheels are very similar to Mitsubishi Evolution 6 wheels, I think they are, or 7. I think they're 7. But the offset is not quite as aggressive. So some people do put Evo wheels on their Magnus and they can get a bit more poke and get them sort of sitting a bit more flush with the guards. These ones are kind of set in a little bit, but I think they look good. So we are getting there and I reckon Apart from the timing belt, this car is pretty much ready to hit the road. So I'm actually thinking about going for a roadworthy certificate pretty much right now because as far as I can tell, apart from that mother can which is on the exhaust, I think the rest of this car is pretty much good to go. So I might actually make a few phone calls and just ask about that exhaust and see whether it's something that would fail roadworthy. 
I know it's dodgy, but as far as I can tell, it is all sealed up. So it would be nice to do the timing belt before a roadworthy and before I start driving it, but I'm almost willing to take that risk and just, I just want to be able to drive the car. And if for some reason that belt fails, we can actually throw a 3.8 litre 6G75 from a Mitsubishi 380 into this car. So that could be a backup plan. <laughs> but I, look, I have a feeling that belt's going to be fine. I think there is a way you can check it by just taking off an excess panel. So I'll probably do that and just have a look at it, eyeball it. I know it's hard to judge the health of a belt just by looking at it. But yeah, I really want to get this car on the road. So I'm thinking we'll go for Red Joe first. And then once I've been able to drive it for a while and suss that timing belt job out a bit more, we'll tackle it later. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I know that is incredibly risky, but I'm just not ready to tackle that job yet. I still want to sort of learn my way around this engine a little bit more because it does frighten me knowing that if I stuff that up, it's going to lunch my engine anyway. So <laughs> you're kind of damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I know I am Captain Dodgy sometimes, but that's just how I roll. I'm willing to take that risk. And everything else I've seen about this car has actually given me a lot of hope. You know, it has seen some maintenance, like those brake pads were almost brand new. And I reckon those rotors probably were as well, but they've just been sitting for, you know, four or five years. So there are a lot of things on this car which point to the fact that it has been loved for the vast majority of its life. It's just, probably the last several years it's been sitting out in the sun, the paint's shot, the interiors, well, the interior was shot, and I've brought it back. Um, and actually that's a good point, I actually found an old for sale listing, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram you would have seen me post it up. I put a couple of the pictures over here on the side of what I found from an old listing that was probably from around 2012 to 2015, I couldn't date it exactly. But looking at what was in the area in Maruka at that time, it kind of seems like it was from around that time frame. So have a look at that car. Like it looks mint actually. The paint is fantastic. So when you think about that, anywhere from eight to 10 years ago, this car actually looked like it was loved by someone and it was listed. I think it was $7,995 for sale. Someone, you know, at that price, a P plater would have bought it probably. And uh, yeah, it hasn't seen a lot of love since then. And whoever bought that car actually bought it on finance because this car had finance owing when I was about to purchase it. Uh, I made a few phone calls and I found out that it had some money owing, but the guy wouldn't tell me how much. But he phoned me back about half an hour later and he said, look, it wasn't much, I've nullified it. And I did another PPSR check and there was none. So just another tip there right at the end of this video, if you are purchasing a car, do get a PPSR check because Potentially there may have been a headache waiting for me if I purchased this car, if the guy I rang found out I was the owner, he probably would have stung me for whatever was owing. So yeah, good little warning there. So that's it guys, I'm gonna finish off here. Thank you very much for watching. If you wanna support me further, you can purchase a Homegrown Heroes t-shirt from motoringbox.com. Still got a few of those left, so if you want one, jump in quick. Otherwise I do have a Patreon and channel membership as well, but by no means are they essential. Simply liking the video or subscribing if you want to also help me out a ton. So that's it guys. Have a good one. I'll see you soon.